Hi students, I'm Abhishek from Vidyavaru and in today's session I'm going to discuss number system. I'm going to discuss some really interesting problems on number system and I'm going to teach you the smartest, the shortest and the simplest methods of solving these questions. So if you like the video, please press the like button for sure, share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and while subscribing make sure that you press the bell icon because that's how you're going to get the notifications of all our videos. As you can see this is a complete English medium video which has been shot especially for our students from South India, especially for our students from Northeast India, students uh, from Telangana, Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, those students down South who face some difficulty understanding Hindi language and of course our dear students from Northeast. So what you have to do is watch the video till the end because uh, that's how you're going to get the benefit of the complete benefit of my teaching. Sure. So let's get started with the first question. Let's see what it is all about. This uh, question says 3 raised to bar 39 plus 3 raised to bar 40 plus 3 raised to bar 41 plus 3 raised to bar 42 is exactly divisible by which of the following? Sure. So now it seems to be a difficult question, but we can make it simple. Think of the smallest power that is uh, there 3 raised to bar 39. Students and 3 raised to bar 39 is present in all the subsequent terms 3 raised to the power 40 will contain 3 raised to the power 39 similarly 3 raised to the power 41 and 3 raised to the power 42 also have 3 raised to the power 39 inside them so we will take 3 raised to the power 39 as the common term sure it is taken as the common term so what are we left with students we are left with if I remove, if I take out 3 raised to the power 39 from 3 raised to the power 39, what am I left with? I'm left with only one. Sure. Similarly, if I take 39 powers out of 40 powers, what am I left with? I'm left with only one power. That means 3 raised to the power 1. Similarly, I take out 39 powers from 41 powers. I'm left with only two powers. Sure. So similarly, 3 raised to the power 42 from 3 raised to the power 42 we will get 3 cube because 39 powers have already been taken out sure now I guess you know that I'm going to add these terms and I'm going to simplify this expression 3 raised to the power 39 let's add them up 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 students 3 cube is 27 sure so 27 and 9 36, 36 and 3, 36 and 3, 39, 39 and 1, 40. So 3 raised to the power 39 into 40. That's how I have simplified this dangerous looking expression. Sure. Now what do we have? We have these numbers 80, 120, 160 and 200. So I still don't have a 120 but I can come up with a 120 by by breaking this 3 raised to the power 39. Students, we have come to this level. Now, let's write 3 raised to the power 39 as 3 raised to the power 38 into 3. Sure. And of course, it is getting multiplied by 40. So the number, now you look at this number. This a huge looking number has been simplified into this shorter number. Now you can see 3 into 40. 3 into 40 is what? It is of course 120. So 3 raised to the power 38 into 120. That's how this number has assumed shape. So when you look at this number, isn't it going to be divisible by 120? If I divide it by 120, what happens? Students, 120 and 120 will cancel each other out. This number 3 raised to the power 38 into 120 is divisible by 120. So, of course, option B is the answer. When I divide it by 120, I'm left with only 3 raised to the power 38. Isn't it smart? And if you like such uh, style of teaching, if you like such methods of teaching, then call upon the numbers which are given on your screen so that you can connect with our representatives and you can be a part of our live online classes. You can be a part of our video courses. Believe me, our live classes, our video courses, our study material and test series that covers everything that a student requires to crack a government job exam, to crack banking and SSC exams. So don't wait, just call upon these numbers because the competition is stiff and you need to be ahead of it and we can help you do that. Let's look at the next question 
and you have to be there till the end because with each question the difficulty level is going to increase now let's see which of the following is greatest we have how many terms one two three and four four terms are there we have to find out which is greatest now observe there is something common in these four terms three and one there is a gap of two five and three students even in the second term there is a gap of two seven and five there is a gap of two similarly nine and seven there is a gap of two so when you have such a term what do we do the first thing we do is rationalize this term so how do we rationalize i have root three minus root one so i'm going to multiply and divide this term i'm going to multiply and divide this term by what by root three plus root one so i'm going to multiply and divide it by root three plus root one that's how i'm going to rationalize it now you know that you have a minus b into a plus b can you see that students why have i rationalized it with root three plus root one because with that i will be getting a minus b into a plus b and you know a minus b into a plus b is what a square minus b square so i'm making use of this identity a square minus b square and of course out here i have root three so root three square will be three so the numerator will become what a square three minus b square one because b square will be one and the denominator is what students the denominator is root three plus root one that is the denominator so this term becomes two upon root three plus root one the first term the first term has been simplified in this format it has been converted into this format sure now similarly students since the gap is two i told you at the start since the gap is two you can rationalize the other terms in the same manner as well you can rationalize the other terms in the same manner and the second term if i use the same method the second term will eventually become what the second term will finally become 2 upon root 5 plus root 3 that is what the second term will be sure it will become 2 upon root 5 plus root 3 the numerator will be the same the numerator 2 will be the same because the gap is 2 sure the third term will become what 2 upon root 7 plus root 5 that is what the third term will be and what will be the fourth and final term it will be 2 upon students now you can tell me just try to write it down try to do it yourself it will be 2 upon root 9 plus root 7 now observe these four terms which are of the same numerator the numerator is the same so when the numerator is the same students these are fractions all these four terms are fractions so when the numerator is same which term will be the greatest one we have to find out the greatest term the numerator is the same so the greatest term now listen to me very carefully the greatest term will be the one which has the smallest denominator which has the smallest denominator so now you need to look at these denominators which denominator the lowest lower term where do we have the smallest lower term students three and one these are the smallest numbers of course much smaller than five seven and nine so this particular fraction students this particular fraction has the smallest denominator so it will be the greatest it will be the greatest so the answer turns out to be root three minus root one it is the greatest term because it has the smallest denominator got it sure let's move on to the next question and again a different type a different variety is going to be there let's find out seems to be an interesting question 29 cube plus 18 cube minus 47 cube that is the number n that is the number n of course we can solve it and then it says this number n is exactly divisible by which of the following we have been given four options so students can you see that the form is a cube plus b cube plus c cube where c is negative of course c has a negative value but there is a reason why c has a negative value over here 
बट वी नो इट इज ऑफ दिस फॉर्म ए क्यूब प्लस बी क्यूब प्लस सी क्यूब अफकोर्स वेयर सी हैज ए नेगेटिव वैल्यू सी हैज ए नेगेटिव वैल्यू सी इज नेगेटिव नाउ I am going to tell you something very interesting. Some property which you must definitely know, which you should definitely know. Students, if a plus b plus c is zero, if you have such a condition that a plus b plus c, the sum of a, b, and c turns out to be zero. If their sum turns out to be zero, then what happens, students? In that case, a cube plus b cube plus c cube, the value of a cube plus b cube plus c cube. Becomes equal to three ABC. It becomes equal to three ABC. When does that happen? It happens when a plus b plus c is equal to zero. Now you know why c is minus forty-seven. Why c is not plus forty-seven? Why c is minus forty-seven? Because only when c becomes minus forty-seven does the sum become zero. The sum becomes zero when c becomes minus forty-seven. You can do it yourself. Twenty-nine, A is twenty-nine, B is eighteen, and C is what? C is minus forty-seven. So their sum turns out to be zero. So now this complicated-looking expression will become very simple. It will become what? Three into A, A B C. Three into A B C. That means three into twenty-nine into eighteen into minus forty-seven. So the dangerous-looking looking expression has become very very simple now sure so now i can further simplify this number i can write it as students 18 into 3 i can write it as 29 into 54 i'm just simply multiplying 18 and 3 so 29 remains as it is 18 into 3 becomes 54 so 29 into 54 into minus 47 That's what this number turns out to be. Now ask yourself. Now ask yourself, is this number is this number not going to be divisible by fifty four? Of course, I can divide it by fifty four. Let's divide it by fifty four. What happens? Fifty four and fifty four cancel each other out. That can happen because this number contains fifty four. This number is divisible by fifty four because it contains fifty. Four, so it is exactly divisible as we can see. It is exactly divisible by fifty-four. Sure. Now let's look at the last question for today. We have to find out which of the following terms is the greatest. Two raised to power one by two, three raised to power one by three, four raised to power one by four, six raised to power one by six. Quite often when I discuss it in the class, my students tell me. Okay, sir. The greatest term will either be the first one or the last one. We are quite sure of that. The greatest term will uh, be either the first one or the last one. But you are mistaken if you are also thinking like that. Now, look at the powers: one by two, one by three, one by four, and one by six. Focus on the numbers. I have two, three, four, and six as the powers. So. Think of the LCM of uh, these numbers two, three, four, and six. Students, what will be the LCM? The LCM will be twelve. Why am I looking at the LCM? Because I have to somehow. Students, right now I cannot compare these numbers. Right now I cannot compare these numbers. Why? Because the powers are different. The powers are not the same. Had the powers been the same, I would have been able to compare them. So in the first step, what I'm trying to do is make sure that the powers become the same. And to make the powers same, I have to think of the LCMs of one by two, one by three, one by four, and one by six. So two, three, four, six. The LCM is twelve. So one by two. So in this power, one by two can be written as what? Two raised to power six into one by twelve. The power outside is one by twelve. So when six and one by twelve multiply, students, when six and one by twelve multiply, what do I get? I get one by two, which was the power in the first case. So now you know that the power outside, the power outside will be will have a factor twelve, will be one by twelve. Sure. So the first term, students, the first term becomes two raised to power six raised to power one by twelve. Now the second term will become what? 
Students, 3 raised to the power 1 by 3. This power 1 by 3 can be written as what? 3 raised to the power 4 into 1 by 12. So again, 4 into 1 by 12. Students, 4 into 1 by 12 will become what? It will become 1 by 3, which is the power in the second case. Sure. Similarly, now you have got the hang of it. Similarly, I can write, students, similarly, I can write the third term as 4 cubed raised to power 1 by 12. Raised to power 1 by 12. That's how I can write the third term. And students, fourth term can be written as what? 6 square, 6 square raised to power 1 by 12. Sure, 6 square raised to power 1 by 12. So now, the powers outside are the same. The powers outside are the same. I can compare these numbers. So 2 raised to power 6, it is effectively what? 2 raised to power 6 is 64. So 64 raised to power 1 by 12, that is the first term. 3 raised to power 4, 3 raised to power 4 is what? Students, 3 raised to power 4 is 81. So 81 raised to power 1 by 12. 4 cube, 4 cube is again 64. So even the third term becomes what? 64 raised to power 1 by 12. Students, the last term, look at it. What will it become? 6 square is 36. So 36 raised to power 1 by 12. The power is the same. The power is the same. So all you need to think of is the greatest term. The greatest term will have the greatest number. 81 raised to power 1 by 12. Students, 81 raised to power 1 by 12. That's the answer, which means what? It came from, it was nothing but a modification of 3 raised to power 1 by 3. So 3 raised to power 1 by 3 has been written as 81 raised to power 1 by 12. So the greatest term out here is option B, 3 raised to power 1 by 3. And students, with that, I'm going to wind up this session. If you've liked uh, my style of teaching, then all you need to do is get in touch with our representatives, call upon the numbers which are given on your screen and do not wait, join our courses so that you can get started with your preparation as soon as possible. And of course, if you have liked the video, press the like button for sure, share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. God bless you. Thank you so much.